trains were all about um, and I suppose I must have started collecting numbers with everybody else at school. So a, a, Ian Allen ABC sort of comes along, I don't know, perhaps 11 or 12 years of age. You're in competition with everybody then, you've got to collect these numbers and underline them in the book. I used to go train spotting nearly every week and just got a fever. You got the old uh, LMS book, the GWR book, the LNER, and every opportunity I got, I go to Chester, Crewe, Warrington. A lot of train spotting, I suppose, was either spent on bridges, station platforms, and as you got into it, more serious train spotting, you had to go and visit the engine sheds where engines were based, where they were serviced, lived, whatever. It was always a smoky place. The floor was usually covered in ash. Uh, if it has been raining recently, there were huge puddles. There was a fair amount of oil on the ground as well. The place would be like a pea soup, even in the summer. We thought that was wonderful. In the early days, we were too frightened of authority, I suppose, to, to even attempt to go around a shed. We used to bump the shed occasionally because um, there were some railings around the back of the coal implant. One or two of the railings were sort of pulled apart. We used to go across this bit of empty ground and then through this railing and take the risk. And uh, you got on with the job, writing the numbers down and keeping a low profile and getting out as soon as you could. The other way of doing it was to go in with a, another party. You used to go and hang around on the outside until they arrived in the bus and mingle in. And then you managed to get in and then there was a row going on at the gate, you know, because somebody who was legitimately going to get in was um, being held back. And, <laughs> and you know one thing that sticks in my mind, I went there one Sunday morning and right outside the shed, brand new from works, was British Legion, 6170. It was beautiful. Of course, I had no camera them days. It was just 6170 British Legion in the boot. You found your little ABC book. You found it, the, the name or the number and you underlined it in blue. And I had, I had a system that um, when I bought a new book, I underlined all the ones I'd seen previously in blue. After that, when you got a cop, you did it in red. That was something very special. Although I never took my train spotting books when I went train spotting. I always had a notebook. Wrote the numbers down in rough. And then when I got home, I transferred my rough notebook to a posh notebook where everything was nice and neat. And then from there, I put them in my train spotting book and underlined them. Well, then we used to get these permits for uh, crew works. That was the other thing. Which said British Transport Commission. Um, works permit. I can't remember the exact words, but it, was, it had your name on it. You went in the end of the paint shop, then we went through the yards um, leading up to the erecting shops, and there'd be a few engines in there then. Now, it was a big building, you know, it's a very high building, obviously, it's like two engines high, isn't it? You probably got the same number several times because you were sort of writing it down off a dome cover, say, and <laughs> there'd be another one somewhere else. I mean, lots of the engines there were quite. Uh, Noteworthy, you know, um, but Duke of Gloucester was one I remember seeing that. But the smoke and the smell and the sound of the steam, they were magic as far as we were concerned. I mean, we were talking about the days before motor cars were very common. There was a tremendous glamour about the steam locomotive. We stood upon the iron bridge watching all the trains Collecting engine numbers in the sunshine and the rain We hoped to see a namer painted red or green And we didn't like the diesels, we much preferred the steam On Saturdays at Warrington we'd sit beside the line Drinking ties or eating sandwiches, we'd watch the number nines. It's there I copped a jubilee, the first that I had seen. It was stood in Dallam Loco Shed, shrouded in steam. My favourite shed was Patrick Croft, I'd go near every day. The foreman sometimes led me round, sometimes chased me away. I recorded engine noises, took photos of the scene Just before they closed the shed In the dying days of steam I once stood by a jinty on the platform at crew Was invited on the footplate by the driver fireman too 
They let me put some coal on to guess that I was keen And proud as punch as I recall I actually made some steam Train spotting is a hobby you find gets ridiculed You might get called a gricer and a rack on cool But it isn't antisocial like some other things you've seen The only drug we knew about was breathing in the steam When my spotting days were over it's then I realised I needed to do something to keep the steam alive So I gave up all my weekends to realise my dream How I work upon the engines And help preserve the age of steam